magnify you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we do praise you. We thank you for this day, for this is a day you have made for us, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We ask, God, that you look on your people. Give us that, that you would have us to live by, for we are not just hearers of your word, uh, but doers also. We claim victory by the cross and by the blood. We have been redeemed from the curse of the law. And for this, God, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. Let the words of our mouth, uh, the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength, our redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. God bless your wonderful hearts. Amen. Thank you, sir. Yeah, that would be, that'd be fine. God bless our hearts. Amen. We're just glad to be here. There's a saying, still six feet above ground. We thank God that, uh, how was your week? God bless your heart. Amen. Amen. We have a lot of folk. The Swansons are on their way to New York. Deacon, uh, Deaconess and Elder Alexander is ministering in a service. Elder Sam is on his way to Chester. So we are, we're split a little bit, but we're here to have a time. How many come to hear God's word? Be thou exalted. After being on this planet for a little bit, we've come to the realization that if it had not been for the Lord, who was on our side, how many know that be the truth? If it had not been for the Lord, who was on our side, we're going to go right into the word. Grab your Bible, if you will. If you don't have one, raise your hand. We'll get you one. But this, this is my Bible. <laughs> I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. It says I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. Now faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. I don't know, but seem like the older I get, the more I am beginning to realize I need help. All right. How many in the house know what I'm talking about? The older I get, when I was younger, I felt like I could do this thing. I got it. I got it. But I found out I didn't have it. It had me. And because it had me, it put me in a fix. Uh, but I'm coming to a place in life. Well, first of all, after, uh, I didn't think I'd reach 61. I'll be 62 in two months, three months. Oh, Social Security. <laughs> Social Security. The only security is in God. Don't kid yourself. I never thought, I never thought that I, I matter of fact, I, it wasn't even a thought. I did not think to go to 61. I just lived. And uh, 61 seemed old. And I remember <laughs> when mom and dad was in their 30s, they were old. <laughs> they were old. <laughs> they, they reached 50. Man, mom and dad's old. Man, 60, I'm a young brother. I'm like, hey. So that just seems like the older you get, the more you take that number and stretch it. <laughs> You put, you put life into that. Oh, amen. Well, the Sam, he left. He said he's going to stay here until he's 135. I said, I'll be celebrating his birthday from above. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. As, as I was meditating in the word, God began to give me more of the reality. As much as I would, uh, you know, there's nothing new. 
Solomon said something that was profound in the book of Ecclesiastes. He said, there's nothing new under the sun. You ain't doing nothing that has not already been done. You can change. You know, I had to laugh. Uh, I had to laugh because I, I keep my suits. I don't throw my suits away because I just wait long enough. It's coming back. <laughs> How many know that be the truth? You can only change a lapel so many times. You can take it off. Amen. You can put new guru. What's that? The guru collar. But it's, I keep my stuff. I put it in segments. That, that'll be back. That's now. That just left. You know what I'm saying? So I keep my stuff. When a person offered me a suit, that's an old one. Ain't old, brother. It's, it'll work. It'll work. Amen. So ladies, that be the, isn't that a fact? Miniskirt ain't nothing. I was, I took, I told you, I took my daughter, my foster daughter to get her a dress. I couldn't find a dress. Literally, I could not. I, we, I saw turtlenecks on the thing. They say they were skirts, but they were about that long. <laughs> They were about that long. I said, that's a turtleneck. That's what we used to put. It was, I'm not, how many women know I'm telling the truth? I was looking and they had these things on a rack. They were about that long. I said, baby, I can't put that on you. That's no, no, no. That's just what it is. But the, the um, miniskirts was out when I was young in the 70s. In the 60s. There's nothing new under the sun. And what God began to give me the realization, the reality of, of life, of life. We, we go through it, and it's so unique that how many of you have tried to figure it out? I, I tried. And have not yet put your finger on it. I tried. You, you go through, I, I, can, I went through segments of, I was re trying to recall, I could only go back so far, but as I began to put it in segments, I could recall how I would throw things out. I, I can remember I, I said this when I was 10. I said, I can't wait till I'm 18. How many ever said that? I can't. Well, I put it in segments of, I couldn't wait till I got my driving license. Oh, glory to God. Oh, so my whole life pushed when I was 10, 12, when I reached 14, I was pushing towards driver's license. I got 17, I got my driver's license. I got to push something out. So I can't wait till I'm 21. I can drink. Glory to God. I can go get my, I can go in the bar. I need false ID. 21. I put that joke out, 21. Then I, I said, okay, 21, I'm leaving the house. I left before then. I left at 18, but. 21, I said segment. I put goals for my life. At 21, I'm gone. Then in that, I said, you know, I'll get married. And in that, I'll get children. And in that, I'll get a house. I, I was putting that stuff out there. Now, here's what's ironic about that. I never once included God. I said what I would do. And I can recall individuals that I personally grew up with, started with, are gone. Gone. They, and this is something, and in each and every one of us, we do it. We, because it's in us to project or to look down and set goals and whatever for life. But the thing of it is, you really don't know who really holds the life until you understand God. Amen. Because we devise a plan. How many got a plan? I put a plan in motion. A lot of things I planned didn't come out. You know, if I had my rathers, I told my mom, I love Simmons. Simmons is a good name, but Rockefeller is a lot better. <laughs> DuPont. Millions. Y'all looking at me like, yeah. A DuPont baby when he's born, when the doctor hit him, a million dollars in the bank. <laughs> Y'all look. Say they hit. But God said, no, I wanted you to grow up in the house of Simmons household. And it was a tough household, it wasn't an easy household. I said tough, but it made me who I am. Because right. God knows where you need to be. Right. Don't, God don't make a mistake. Look at somebody, he don't make a mistake. Amen. He knew who you had to be, to be who he would make you to be. Yeah. The thing is, we sidetracked the plan. 
Let's talk a little bit. I want to go into the word of God, into the pro book of Proverbs. This is one of my favorite verses. I've said this so much that I can't even begin to calculate the time. One thing I've learned over the course of my life, I say the word so I can see the word and become the word. I say it. I said this many a nights walking around the plant that I work. I said it many a times as I drove to work. I said it many a times laying in bed. I said it many a times as I walked the, 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 uh, the carpet uh, of this church. Here's what I said. I said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. Proverbs 3 and 5. Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understandings, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. I want to go, uh, you keep your finger there. Crystal, you got it? Yeah, bless your heart. We, we want to go to the book of Matthew uh, right quick, uh, the seventh. Let me see here. I, I, God just laid this in my spirit. I just want to just go here. So before I give it to you, I want to find it. In the sixth chapter of Matthew, the 33rd verse, now, I'm going to go up a little bit further. I'm, I'm going to go uh, at the 28th verse. Now, 27th, that's even better. That gets a little bit more bite to it. In the 27th verse of the 6th chapter, which of you by worrying can add a cubit to your stature? Or So why do you worry? about clothing and consider the lilies of the field how they grow and n they neither toil nor spin i mean they don't work they just grow and yet i say to you that even solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these now if god so clothed the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is thrown and to the oven, will he not much more? How, will he not what? Much more. Clothe you, O you of little faith. Therefore, why do you worry? Saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek what first? The kingdom. But seek what first? The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added. What I begin to come to grips with, because we're not seeking first the kingdom, we're seeking the wrong thing. Look at somebody say, I'm seeking the wrong thing. You, you, how many know what I'm talking I've sought the wrong thing. For those that, first of all, I'm going I'm to share something with you. Back in the day, this is going back in the day, a, a man or a woman did not select a mate. You didn't select a wife. We got one for you. Mother, father. They would select a wife for you. Mary was betrothed to Joseph not by dating and courting. She was selected. I wish we could do that today. God knows I... How many, oh, how many people of my age would agree? Man, I, Jesus. Mama said all are grown. No, I'm not saying, y'all, please, y'all get. No, I, I, let me, let me help us, help me. <clears throat> we go after sometimes the wrong thing because you don't know. Look at somebody say, because you're young, you don't know. No, you, you think you know, but you don't know. Matter of fact, a fool thinks he knows. A proud person thinks he knows. But the, the more you, the prouder you are, the stupider you are. Can I use that word, stupider? <laughs> stupider. The more ignorant you are. Because when you become proud, you lock yourself. Men are notorious for it. Wife are telling 
No, I don't know what I'm doing. And she's looking at you, big dummy. God bless your heart. I tell you, if I'd have listened to my wife on numerous occasions, I'd have saved myself a lot of dumb stuff. I look over at her, and, and who are you trying to tell? She goes, I'm the man. And so it goes, you know, you pull that, I'm the man. <laughs> I told y'all, I rode to North Carolina. I didn't know where I was at. I saw alligators in North Carolina. <laughs> oh my God, I was in a place in North Carolina, and, and thank God, God gave me the right wife. My wife does not, if she had been, yeah, 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 we'd have got out and fought. <laughs> yeah, but when you're mad, when you wrong, you know you're wrong. I don't need you telling me I'm wrong. I need you to comfort me. <laughs> Maybe you made a big mistake, but we okay. Women, y'all hear that? No, men, you, hey, God bless my heart. She said, we lost. I said, we ain't lost. We ain't lost. <laughs> you know, can, can I share? I shared this before. And I'm gonna say, when you don't know where you're going, ask somebody. You're, 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 when you don't know where you're at, stop the car. Well, get a GPS. Thank God for G. Lord, thank you for geographic location. Thank you. I didn't have a GPS, and I was riding. I was trying to get to Virginia Beach, and I figured if I run the water, I'd get there, and I did. <laughs> About four hours longer than what I should have drove. But the other thing that I'm really pulling out of this is that I don't know. I don't know. That's why you go to people that know. Don't go to somebody that knows as much as you. How many know what I'm talking about? If you know as much as me, you can only tell me what I know. It sounds come, but we do it. We don't confide in the right folk. We have a tendency. Let me share something with y'all, church. I'm going to share this first. If you got something that you want, don't want nobody to know, don't tell them. That, that was a brilliant analogy. I don't want nobody to know this. I think I'll go tell Diane. <laughs> and then here when people say at my age, I'm, you can tell me because it's gone the next minute. But look, look, you ever tell somebody, don't tell nobody. You should have just told them, go tell everybody that you know. Because I can only hold so much for so long. The priest have to vow a vow that he can't tell. You can go in this, I killed so-and-so, and he's got to hold it by vow. But even him are loose. I'm going to share something with y'all, church. We are, let me go to the book of Proverbs. Do this right quick. I'm going to show you something here. Book of Proverbs, not book of uh, Psalms 82. And we're going we're gonna to walk, God, I, I got to hurry up because I'm, I'm going somewhere. Where, look, in the book of, of Psalms 82, I'm going to share something with you here that God revealed to me that was powerful. This is why you pray. Look at somebody say, this is why I pray. You pray. Look at this. Here's why you pray. God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the what? Gods. Who do you think he's talking about? He's talking about us. He's talking about us. He talks with us. We judge. Huh? Look, look at this here. Look, look, look how good this gets. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked and defend the poor and the fatherless? And do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and the needy. Free them from the hands of the wicked. Why do why, they do not know, nor do they understand? They walk about in darkness and all of the foundations of the earth. And this is where I want to get. I said, you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High, but you shall die like mere men, because you won't come up to where I am. God did something that was profound. I'm going to show you the analogy of how he deals a lot of times. He deals... God has a plan. He has a, and it's not complicated. We, we, what we do, 
we complicate life because we put our understanding in the equation. Kind of makes sense. You, you can't figure this out, but you try. And you sit there and you mix in your analogy of what you know in life. And you only know so much. How many say yes? Right now, I'm standing here. I could be just broke. And I start worrying about, my God. Uh, the reason why you can't say out of your mouth a lot of times what you think because your words will become. Y'all understand what I'm saying? That's why the Bible says if you can't say it right, don't say nothing. Don't, don't, oh, glory to God. Or, or you can say by faith, once you understand, you can pull out of the faith realm into the physical realm, and that's why people say you're crazy. You can speak glory to God. I, I te I'm telling you what I know. I spoke things out, out. I pulled it right out. I said, I said, a good man leaveth an inheritance for his children's children. The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. I said that. See, you, you, when you say word, you begin to pull it out of the spiritual and bring that joker in. I said, a good man. I didn't know how good I was. It didn't even matter how good I was. It just mattered what the word said. Got to see point. And I said, a good man. Now, here's what I begin to think. Hmm. Now, how am I going to leave an inheritance for my children's children? Ah. Ah. They're not, they're of course, not a devil coming. You can rob a bank. And you can, you know, you can be, you can, you know, you know how deal. You can do, you know. So I, I knew not, I, 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 first of all, I don't look good in orange and, and a suit. I like, I like to be able to, I don't like one piece stuff. That's me. That's only me, though. I ain't messing with you. But I trust it. See, let me share something with you. You've got to trust God because he does what he does, and I know what I do. First of all, I'm telling you, as much as I love everybody in here, and I love everybody in here, I don't trust you. I trust my wife. God knows I trust her so far because my wife can only do what she can do. See, you, you, you try. We are given by God the ability to birth women. Men help, women birth. And I'm going to show you how much, how trustworthy we are. 1.7 million babies are without parental houses. Is that trustworthy or what? God said, I'm going to trust y'all at best. 1.7 million babies. Y'all understand? For those that are in this place, foster, know what I'm talking about. Those parents that are pressed up against the wall, they all, they, you can only press you for so long, you'll give up the boat, man. We'll walk out of a marriage in a New York minute. Stand up there before God, lying out of our teeth. Lord, I love, honor, and cherish to death to we, you lying through your teeth. I, my God, I'm preaching wrong here. Something, you know, yeah. People behind you, they wondering. <laughs> Sickness and health, richer for poor. Richer or for poor? You've got to be kidding me. You lose your job. Don't bring a check in. <laughs> Baby, I lost my job. Man, you better find something. <laughs> hey, this way this thing works. Can't eat dirt. My baby, my babies. I, I did 20 years in there. 20 years, five months, 14 days to be exact. I retire. Bam. My kids had the audacity. Dad, what you going to do now? <laughs> now, I, re I retire. I know you ain't going to stop working. Y'all see the deal. That's why you have to trust God. Oh, God, help me in this house. When you are up against the wall, God, i got to trust you. Because nobody else will turn our backs on one another in a heartbeat. 
I couldn't imagine being uh, Mar what's that baby that, God bless her heart, I can't even think of her name. The one that was with President uh, Clinton, the parents of, or the parents of, of a Dahmer or something like that. And, and you want to disown them. Your name all bad. Uh, my baby, but. We'll disown one another in the church. Where did you fall? God help a preacher. Y'all lift me up, carry me like Jesus. Oh, glory to God, glory to God. Let me fall. I, I don't even belong to new life. You're like this. I'm, I'm, I'm Bethany. I'm, I'm, I'm Gloria Shahab. No. You'll dump me in a New York bed. Y'all, hey, you know I know. I done found out after 61 years on this planet, I, I, God is the only one that's sticking closer than a brother. Y'all hear me? That don't mean I don't love folks. I just don't put my trust in them. I rely at best. If you fall, that ain't going to make me stop, nor will it make me stop loving you. Because I haven't put that much, oh, y'all help me. In the book of Genesis, God calls a man, calls him out of a heathenistic household by the name of Abraham. 15th chapter, in the, in the, and God told him, now this was a hard calling, because every time, let me share something with you. Here's the analogy. When God calls you, you don't have enough sense to get saved. Y'all, uh, I just felt that. That's why I had to walk away. Huh? This man keep calling us dummy. No. I'm not calling. <laughs> let, me, let me explain what I'm saying, because some people might get offended and think I'm calling you stupid. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying we only know what we know. But when you come to this, only the Holy Ghost can give you this. See, you can't be taught by a man, God. Oh, Jesus, I wish. As much as I can stand up here and share this word, if the Holy Ghost ain't talking to you, you ain't learned nothing. You just says, how, how many of you sat up in church when you wasn't saved? <laughs> walked out just as ignorant as when you walked in. Go ahead. A lot of folk today going to church just to show off their stuff. Walking by the girl, hey, baby, what do you say? <laughs> they ain't coming to hear God. Brother, they ain't here. They ain't looking at the musician, looking in the choir box. Right. I told you, I went to church and got my wife. I ain't going to church to hear the word. You want to pick me out a wife? Yeah, there she is. <laughs> what did you hear from God? No thing. I got what I wanted. How many know you women, y'all better watch out because some brothers come here just to get you. You better watch it. Oh, don't, don't, don't you save him. Don't you bring him in to get saved. Let God bring him in to get saved. Let God, y'all, y'all hear me? Because he knows the heart. You look on the outward appearance. God looks at the heart of a man. He looks, oh, he looks deep. He knows us. You know, look, do you think if I was picking a crew, I'd have picked the 12 he picked? <laughs> Knowing what I'm going to betray me, I'd have wired him up off jump. You a liar, get off the crew, you ain't with us. And you're stealing our money. <laughs> Judas was stealing the money, for those that didn't know. He was raking off the top every chance he got. He, he was Calais with the trustee. Trustee, don't y'all be ripping us off? <laughs> He count one for you, two for me, two for the church, one for me. And y'all think, you think, y'all look at me laughing. Yeah, it happens. Deacon's in there ripping the church off. But you ain't ripping the church off, you're ripping God. See, you can't. I would not steal from God. If I'm going to take from somebody, I ain't taking from God. God calls this man out. And here's what he did in the book of, in the 15th chapter, and in the 13th verse, and he said to Abram, no, 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 I'm, I'm, let me go back, church. I'm, the 12th chapter, the 12th chapter, the first verse, 
Now the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country and from your family. When I got saved, that's what he told me to do. Get out of the country. Now I don't mean, now listen to me, y'all, get the analogy. He didn't tell me to leave the world, the world, but I got saved in England, so I did get out of the country. But, I got, but he said, you got to leave for what you know. Get out from what you know. And normally when you step out, you step out by yourself. How many know I'm telling the truth? You step out by yourself. When I got saved, I was not thinking about nobody but Jimmy Simmons. Because God showed me me. He didn't show me mama. Didn't show me daddy. Didn't show me none of my brothers and sisters. Nor my wife. Or my son. He showed me me. I got saved. And I stepped out. Matter of fact, for those that are saved, you're in, a, you're in the royal kingdom. You step out of this. I'm in it, but I'm not of it. We act like this is our home. This ain't your home, man. You visit it. Everybody here, visitation. Visitation rights. That's all you get. When, we, when you birth, doctors say, eh, visitation. Because you ain't staying. Some babies don't even leave the hospital alive. As we're standing here right now, folk are dying every second. Bam. Somebody leaving this planet. Gone. Gone. And I say this to myself, what is that joke going to click and I'll be gone? Because <laughs> you ain't this at home. You're just here visiting. I thank God I've gotten older because now I can appreciate it. I can look back over my life. Yeah. Look at what God has done. Because I know what I, I know me. What you, if at anything, learn you. Don't waste your time learning other folk. You studying other folk. Oh, Diane, I know just what she going to wear. I know how she going to act. Oh, I see how she act. I know. I know. No, you better see how you going to act. We got too many thermometers, not thermostat. You get, it, it gets hot, you hot. It gets cold, you cold. Lukewarm, you lukewarm. No, control this joker. If it's hot, I turn up the thermostat. Yeah, turn it down, cold. No, I, I'm not going to be controlled by you. You understand what I'm saying? We're controlled. Somebody got out of the He ain't even talk to me today. Pastor, he shake my hand. He act like I wasn't even standing there. What in the world? Then you go home talking about me, talking to somebody else, burning their ear off when you could have talked to me. Now you stop and think about this. He didn't say nothing to me. Did you say anything to? Did you say anything to me? <laughs> I walked right by him. He ain't say nothing to me. Did you say anything, <laughs> Pastor? I'm walking by you. Oh, God bless your heart, baby. I wasn't even thinking. <laughs> Went to the job. Ain't nobody said hi. Boss act like he didn't even know me. He know you. Don't show up and watch. He act like he didn't know me. Watch him. Check. Wasn't here today. You don't need people. God, y'all listening to me. Don't get all messed up because of, you're out of it. Called you out. 75 years old. God calls him out. He said, and here's what he told him. Then he said to Abram, no certainty that, no, no, I'm back there again. I don't go there. Here, look at what he tells him. He said, out of the country of your family, from your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be blessed. And I will bless those who bless you and I will curse them who curse you. Look, and in, in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Every go to God. How many folk are blessed because you're in the present? I left our job 2010. January 1st, and AGA still tell me, Jimmy, we miss you. Wasn't, I wasn't a great worker. I mean, well, work as far as knowing the job. <laughs> but I was a prayer. I walk in the room, things change. They stop talking about me, one, and then, you know. But I, oh, you, you got to make a difference where you're at. That's right. Well, you, you walk in, here come Hellraiser. <laughs> or here come the blessed person. I remember before I got saved, I'll never forget this as long as I stand on this planet. I was so miserable with life. God said, every time I get sense complaining. I didn't even know I was complaining because I wasn't saved. I was miserable. And, and I said, ah, 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 I was mad about it. Ah, it's cold. Ah, I'm cursing. I told you, I'll curse like a pot. No, 
don't even know a pirate curse like me. I just curse. And I curse. This, this, this tastes like this. So I said, man, you always complaining. I'll complain about you. When I got saved, I saw life different. First of all, every time my heart beat, I'm going, glory to God, I see it just beat. I just got happy. Yeah, I told you, I, man, I did a, I did a thing. Every time I did this, I'd hold my heart, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I took a step. Thank you, Jesus. I walk up and said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Because I found something to thank him for. Just being alive sometimes. Huh? Babies come home safe. Huh? Get up in the morning, go to God. Ain't a lot of money in my, what is my, my God, bless my heart. It ain't your check anyhow. Yeah, I got my check. Ain't your check. I want y'all to start thinking it ain't your check. I tell you what, keep it and watch us. Keep it. That's the problem with folk now. They think it's their check. Won't pay the people that is their check. Ain't nobody asked me to do it. Nobody asked. Here's what I want somebody to do. Call Atlantic Electric. Please. I'm telling you. Say, I'm going to the casinos and spend your money. Is it okay? If you find somebody that tell you yes, please give me their name. <laughs> Call South Jersey Gas, Verizon, whatever, T-Mobile, whoever. I'm getting ready to throw your money away on some liquor. Are you all good with it? <laughs> no, no, that's a crazy, man, that's a brilliant analogy. That tells you it ain't your check. You're working to help us. Help you. It's a vicious cycle. Diane, when you get up in the morning, you're going to work for us, helping us. You bring your check back. Here it is. Now, it's my check to give to y'all. I'm a good steward. Matter of fact, Uncle Sam going to get his first. And he don't trust you. He know you. I'm taking mine before you get it. I, I had to start thinking like Uncle Sam. I had, to make, I had to take money out of my check before I got it. Put it for 401k, because if I get it, I'm going to spend it. God knows. Glory to God. He, he pulls him out here. Look at what he does. Then God tells him this. And this is what blew my mind. In the 15th chapter, now, this is what, see, time messes our mind and faith walk. Because time is, I want him to do it now. If God had a gave me the knowledge I know now when I was 18, I would have not used it right. Because I don't have nothing to base on what I do by what I've done. That was just good. I, I hope we had some course, but I didn't say that again. I can look. Now I see why that happened. But when I was here, I didn't understand it. I told y'all, and, and, and I was 18 years old, 19 years old when I went to Vietnam, 19. I did not know when I was walking around Agent Orange that it would be a reciprocate downrange. Now, I went to a lot of dumb stuff in the interim, but it helped me. That, that the devil set out to kill me, God, God helped me. God turned it around. Y'all understand this thing. Just when they think they're going to kill me, God will flip that thing. See, because I trust him. I trust him. I got to trust him. When they thought they were going to put me out of the house, God flipped that thing. Sometimes God got to move you to bless you. Look at somebody. Sometimes he's got to move you because you won't move. You're scared. I remember when Daddy taught us how to swim. Remember that, Jess? Man, we run and holler. Ah, he's trying to catch us. He's going to throw us in deep water. Ah, well, I'm sitting here looking. All of a sudden, they stuck up behind me and got me and threw me. Bam. Man, I hit that deep water. I kicked up out of that junkie. But it, you ready? It wasn't as deep as I thought it was. See, I thought it was deep. But I went, because, see, I would only go to the, you know, you, you know how we, you know. And I didn't realize that it wasn't that deep. But I couldn't swim until I went deep, going to God, until I got deeper. See, I couldn't swim on the, sh you know, you digging dirt. 
Daddy stuck him crazy. But here's the thing. He didn't just throw me out there. He stood and watched. God bless my heart. God don't just throw you out there. He's standing and watch you. Yeah, you got this. You see the deal? He ain't going to let you drop. They on the boat. He in the bottom boat sleep. He told them, let us go to the other side. They look at him. Jesus down there sleep. Storm, water splashing everywhere. Jesus here. Jesus, carest thou not that we perish? He stands up. Now all this time, the fishermen, they could swim. But fear grabs you. How many of you ever been afraid? They're going to take my stuff. And then you visualize. Your mind blows up. All you need, you get a cold. It gets rough. Then somebody tell you, oh, I know so-and-so had that. Man, they died of lung cancer. <laughs> oh, I got to go to the doctor. You go to the doctor, fear, heart pump. Let me tell you something. You could drop dead right now of an aneurysm. Drop dead of a heart attack. You drop dead. See, so what I realized, I ain't going to be afraid to die. I'm going to just understand death. Because I'm going to die. So, now here's the thing. I, tell you, I told you all, I shared with you. Prostate cancer, doctor thought I was going to cry and break down in the office. Well, I had already grabbed heart, heart of reality. Simmons, you're going to die. Just when, how? And uh, he said, Mr. Simmons, I got some bad news. Well, doctor tell you you got bad news, you know, he's he walking all slow. <laughs> had a little folder in his hand. <sighs> Dark and close work. Stand up. And we're going to help you. No, God's going to help me because you can't heal me can't heal me. You look at a doctor and doctor tell If a doctor ever tell you he can heal you, he's fired. He's practicing medicine. I, amen. I know what I'm talking. I recruited him. He'll never tell you he can heal you. And then they always got to tell you the worst. They can't tell you the best. They tell you the worst. Then they walk their way up to the best. I said, you could die. I said, sir, I'm going to die. I mean, not now, but and he looked, I said, now, I have two places. I can stay here and go to heaven. God, see, I, when things hit me, church, do you realize I'm skipping because there's a reason to skip? When I take off this earth suit, I'm going to be free. See, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. Huh? I ain't going, oh, y'all better look out in this house. I'm going to see Jesus face to face. I want to be able to walk up, God bless, as much as I pray and I grab hold in, in the flesh realm, in the physical realm, and I try to sneak into the spirit realm, I'll see him. Mother, I'll grab his hand. Oh, y'all better look out. I'm going to grab that hand. Still got the nail print in it. And I'm going to be able to tell him face to face. You know how many times I said, thank you, Jesus, thank you. I want to be able to tell him face to face. Do you know <laughs> nothing like, see, I, I, can, I can text you. I can email you, but it ain't nothing like seeing you face to face. I'm going to see him face to face. Tell him, thank you. God told Abraham in the 15th chapter, he said, you're going to go through all this. Abraham was 99 years old. He was 75 when he left, left Haran. Here's what's crazy. Here's what's crazy. First of all, he was 75, but if he was going to have children, 75 would have been a rough age at that age. He was 100 years old when he had Isaac. But God wanted to tell, show him, this is all about my plan, not yours. See, your plan, and they tried their plan when they came up with Ishmael. Messed up. Here's what God told him in the 15th, 13th, 15th chapter, 13th verse. He said, then he said to Abram, Know sir, certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs. They will serve them and they will afflict them 400 years. That's when they were in Egypt. The reason why he put them in Egypt so they can grow in number. That's number one. You, you don't understand what God does, but God says he took 70 in, millions came out. Some Bibles say three million, some say two. But could you imagine 70 people went in with Jacob, Israel. Millions came out 400 years later. Here's the other thing, too. If they didn't afflict them, they wouldn't want to leave. 
How, how many of you had to be beat, 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 beat before you leave a bad situation? I've seen women in abusive relationships. They beat, beat, beat. Some die in the relationship. But after a while, they grab those that can grab hold, grab hold. I've been in, I've been in situations that if I hadn't gotten beat, I wouldn't have left. Or if it hadn't been beat, 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 I wouldn't have left. So, but here's the thing, church. Let me share something with you. That's why I trust God. Because even in the beat, beat, leaving, I didn't know. But God knew. That's why I don't, I, I used to say, am I doing God's will? You want to know what God's will, perfect will is? You want to know what God's perfect will is? Get saved. That's just in a nutshell. I, I want to know, God, if I'm making the right choice. Get saved. He'll figure it out. We're trying to figure out stuff that you ain't going to figure out. You, you, if I could tell y'all what's going to happen tomorrow, we'll all be rich. I'll give you the numbers to the lottery. I'll give you, I'll be passing them jokers out. Yeah, but here we go. But run, play this number. Play it next tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you're going to pay me before you get the number. No, I'm just kidding. Because I'm going to be rich. See the deal. That's why God knows. He holds it. He holds it. He's so sharp. He tells you, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to even tell you when I'm coming back. If I told you when I was coming back, you'll all be ready. Be ye ready, for you know not the hour. He told them, he said, 400 years. And here's the thing that blows my mind. We are so unappreciative. Ah. We, how soon do we forget? How many of you in here have been really sick? I mean, sick to a place that, and you know, the doctor told you, it, it ain't looking good. And you walk up out of that, and here you are today. You think God didn't do that? How many of you in here have been, been so broke that you've been broke beyond broke? <laughs> Matter of fact, you had the, the, the big B. <laughs> and nobody would loan you nothing. They're looking at you, bank. Now, uh, don't even walk in the door. They got a buzzer. That eh, broke. <laughs> and God moved. I, I t God moved. I told you, I was, I was, I had the telephone book numbers. I talked. I was ready to file bankruptcy. It was there. I said, Lord, I can't let my family go without not looking. And I pray. I, I pray. See, sometimes God puts you someplace where you've got to pray. I mean, now this is a very emotional closeness. I said, Lord, you know me. You know me. You know what I do. You know how I act. Help me. I don't know what to do right now. I, bankruptcy is an option. I don't want to fire. I don't. I don't. God, help me. Help. I was driving. I'll never forget. I was driving the back road to the job. I'm at the job that morning, sitting there. And just so happened this one young lady that works water come over. She we're talking, just talking, it, you know. She said, well, uh, Jimmy, uh, I got to get over to the admin office and go get my money. I said, what, they giving out checks or something? She said, no, nah, I borrowed against my 401k. I said, how do you, you did what? <laughs> she said, I borrowed against my 401k. I didn't know you could borrow against no 401k. I said, can I do it? He said, yes, you're, you're 401k, you got, you're in it? I said, yeah, I'm in a 401k, I've been having a... Now, this is what's unique. I beelined over there, right? I'm going with you. I sat down. She get, made her transaction. So I asked the lady, I said, I'm, you know, very reluctant. I said, I'm here to borrow against my 401k, you know, like it was my money. You know, I didn't even know it was my money. You know. And uh, she said, you are sure, Jimmy? I said, well, make me feel a little better. Here's a form. Oh, Jesus, give me a form. I said, now, I'm happy now. You, how much can I get? She said, well, they'll tell you. They'll tell you. You see what you got in there. Now, this, you tell me, God, ain't God, bless see, I jump, I'm jumping, I'm jumping. Look, look, look. <laughs> she said, well, I'll call. You won't call? Yeah, I'll call. 
And uh, I was up against the wall, 11000 and some change. $11,000. I was pushed up. I owed Citibank. Time. I was owing everybody. I had credit cards maxed out. Anybody have a credit card maxed out? They call you just, they call you at midnight. Mr. Simmons, you know you owe us. <laughs> calling me, call, calling, just call, ring. I wouldn't even answer the phone. See, look, we didn't have call ID back then, so you couldn't see who's calling. You know, you just look at the phone. If it rang a long time, that's them. <laughs> How many know I'm telling you? That's them. They ain't going to stop calling. That's them. You know, most folk will ring, 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 hang up. Ring, ring, ring. That's them. Ring. Don't answer the phone. Tell the kids, don't pick that phone up. And, uh, she, she comes back. She says, Jimmy, you can get 11,000. God bless my heart. 11,000 and change. I said, I said, <laughs> you, you know how it is. You're playing. You're playing with me. How many of somebody you playing with me? Don't, don't joke with me. Don't. Come on. Now, this is serious. She said, she said, Jimmy, Jimmy, calm down. Calm down. I'm a little happy. And she said, 11,000 change. I looked up. I said, God, you're good. Look, look, look. Immediately. Immediately. God, you're good. You talking about a good ride home? You hear what I'm telling you? Had a little extra to go and get a burger or something. You know what I'm saying? I was screaming. Screaming. God has given me, and here's the side, God bless my heart. God promises is all I need to live by. He promised it, he'll do it. Young people, I'm telling you, you ain't, he will not see you forsaken. People say, see, people that go out and just get beat up is because they don't rely on him. He will not. I'm standing here 61 years on this planet. He's never seen the right, righteous forsaken or seed begging bread. I've done. Now, I'm going to tell you what. Brothers, listen to me. I've cut flowers in the flower field. I picked blueberries, strawberries. I, walk, I worked in a sewer plant. Don't matter to me. I picked up cans. I'll junk whatever it is to junk. Plastic, aluminum, whatever. So I know I do all that I can do. Guess what? I don't even think twice about it. I'm pushed up against the wall. I don't sit there and cry. I mean, if I cry, it's crying because, Lord, you are the pressure. But I don't give up. They won't hire me. They'll hire you. Somebody will hire me. I told you, glory to God, I went and worked in a flower field. Master sergeant retired in the Air Force. I took a break. I'm cutting flowers. I'm out there cutting peace work in August. I ain't going to work. I, that ain't enough money. I worked at Cumberland Farms for five seventy-five an hour, scrubbing floors with a job. God bless my heart. Had a job. I needed a second job. Rang the doorbell with pots and pans in my briefcase. Ding, ding, cooked the meal for him. Cooked a meal. Them pots, I still got a set of them. That joker, boy, I cook a meal, fried chicken, apples. My wife bear me witness, cook, boy, my God. Sell me a set of cookware. I'd do whatever it had to be. I drug vacuum cleaners. You kidding me? But I know if I do what I do, you tell me God won't do. You hear me? In this house. Shut up there giving up. Like you don't have a plan for you. Then you can tell your children and your children's children if you live. And your great great grandchildren. Daddy, grandpa did it. You can do it. And God will take you through. What is it? Oh. I've got to close on this. But this, this generation is mealy mouthing us, man. They stirring up sicknesses. And you feel like it's acting up. 19 years old. Get up. <laughs> you hear what I'm talking Foot. My foot ain't acting right. You taking my money, <laughs> my social security. I, preacher, can you preach like this? On Yeah, you can. 
came off of five, eight, 38 treatments of radiation. And four days later, I was right back at the job. Told the man, I got to go back to work. 38 treatments of radiation. And people said, man, were you crazy? Were you crazy? You crazy. Went right, got to get back to work. And Lord knows that was, I came back on a Friday, seemed like all hell broke loose. And God was orchestrating. You, you hear what I'm telling you? He will work this thing. Don't let nobody, I, God help me. Don't let nobody tell you, no, you can't do it. You don't know what I can do. Look me in my face, tell me, I, Mama had a farmer's home, Sook had one, Diane, you and Martin had one. Everybody get in the farmer's home house. They tell me, no, you can't get one. Lady, you better, God, I thank God I'm saved. <laughs> Leap over that cow. You know what I'm saying? I said, I can't talk to you. Give me somebody I can talk to. Supervisor come out. And she told me, the prerequisite is you got to live in the state. That's all I need to know. You're in the military. Don't even worry about what I'm in. Watch and see what I'm in. Year later, farmer's home house, I'm in it. Tell you what you can't do. Told me at the job, Jimmy, you got to get settlement money. Settlement money. About how much I need? Uh, you need roughly about $2,500. Jesus. Went to my boss. I need a month off. He go to your boss and tell him you need a month <laughs> off. I need a month off military. Got my wife, kids, family together. Get out to the blueberry field. <laughs> Daddy said, here, you got the contract, son. God bless your heart, Dad. $3,100 later. <laughs> tell me what God won't do. Yo. Yeah. He don't just want to give you a house. He want to give you houses. He want to give you stuff family can stay in. You hear what I'm telling you? He won't give you a car. He'll give you cars. Oh, y'all looking at me. Well, you know the deal. He wants your family blessed. He wants you blessed. He wants you coming in blessed, going out blessed. It ain't nothing. Look, the earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, the world and everything in it. You tell me. How come they got it? How in the world can a drug joker drive a Jaguar Mercedes? They ain't got a license. <laughs> Don't even have a license. <laughs> Devil talking to you, DT. Come here, girl. Can you what you can get? If he ain't dead, he's in prison. Yeah. Devil want to kill you. Yeah. You just hang tough with God. You trust him. What is it to God that you live in a multi, multi million dollar house? What it means to God if you're giving him the glory? I'm closing on this note. This is it. Money went to a convention. $1,000, $100, $50 bill, and a dollar. An extra $1,000 bill. Where you been? Man, I've been all over the world. Paris. I just, man, casino. $50, $100. Where you been? Man, I've been traveling, cruise, whatever. That's the dollar. Where you been, church? <laughs> <laughs> dollar. Where you been, church? <laughs> see, see where the dollar's at? Church. Where's the thousand dollars? Y'all see what I'm talking about? You know, that's the mentality. Poor me, poor little old me. Jesus ain't begged for nothing. And he drove new when he drove it. Brand new donkey. <laughs> Bible said never been rode. Am I right? Never been driven. Tell the man I need this house. Jesus have need, no problem. Matter of fact, we're going to set up the whole meal. Don't worry about it. We got him. You tell me he won't bless you or bless you. Man, I'm not saying that. To I'm telling because it's a fact. Am I right, baby? Look at it. Oh, yeah. I, Selena, bro, they tell you what you can't get. You get. God will open up doors for you when you step on his word. You step out on this. Yeah. Stand on it. He got a plan. Stand there, glory to God. They're going to tell you, you just said stupid. We just push you through school. Push me so I can get blessed. So I got a diploma. Glory to God. Get what I need to get and go. God will bless as sure as I'm standing on this holy ground, closing, drag this for me, sir, if you would. 
No, just move it. Don't drag it. Oh, you've been a hard worker. Get some brothers to help you. Let me grab this off. How many of you in this house, in this house, can trust God? Stand up here with me. Can trust him. I mean, downright. I mean, look, look. Every step you take, I'm on this word, Simmons. I'm trusting him on the word. Come up here and touch and agree with a fighter. I feel, I feel like fighting this craziness. Telling the devil he's a liar from the pits of hell. How many feel like telling him he's a liar? Watch out. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. I dare you. I dare you. Tell me what I can't do and what God isn't going to do. That means if he's pressing you hard, that means there's a big blessing. How many feel that he pressed hard? There's a big blessing. You hear what I'm telling you? I'm pressed. Oh. I'm telling you, glory to God. Fear, come, fear, fear, fear fights me every day. Simmons, your body aching. Simmons, I'm going to stay here till God called me home. I don't care what it look like. Devil, yeah, you're a liar from the pit. How many of you in here is faithful, faithful enough, not crazy, faithful enough to believe that a, a million dollar check can come in the bag, uh, come in the mail? A man, a person can walk up to you. I'm not saying this to say, I'm saying it because it's a fact. Somebody can walk up to you and say, I, I don't even know why I'm doing this. When they gave, they gave that money to Oral Roberts, Oral Roberts wouldn't come down, said, till he got the money. This man, an unbeliever, here's what he said. I heard it. I, I, I said he was as crazy as a bed bug, but I wrote the check. The world going to call you crazy. You're gonna, you, some of y'all going to walk in loan forgiveness. You're going to walk up there. They're going to forget that you owed them. Father, in the name of Jesus, you know my heart. I'm just coming clean. Anything in me that's not like your God, I lay it down. I'm, I got enough God sense to know I don't want to offend you. I got enough God sense to know that I need you. How many can say, I need you, Lord? I, I need you. Lord, I need you. This isn't a cop out. This isn't a play. This is a reality statement. I need you. I need you. I am not here on this planet to live without you. From day birth to day home going, I need you. Every second, every hour, I need you. I ask you now, God, to look at whatever situations we're standing in, individually and collectively. I trust that you're going to make a way. How many believe he'll make a way? You're going to make a way. David made a sound statement, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor seed begging bread. And sometimes the devil tried to throw us into a guilt trip. Let him know you're a liar from the... He's still on a guilt trip because he know God will bless you. You hear what I'm saying? The reason why he's trying to press you out of measure because he know God is going to bless you. God, I'm going to say it. And look, and when he do it, say it from the mountaintop. If it's money, somebody look, look at him and say, God, I thank you. Oh, glory to God. Yeah, but also, God, I thank you. Right now, I speak to fear, doubt, unbelief. You're not my lot. I don't have no fellowship with fear, doubt, or unbelief. Why would I not believe God? If he can throw the sun up in the, in the, in the heavens, more stars than the, than the law can allow. And he know them all by name. Got me up this morning. Church, you hear what I'm saying? He got me up. I didn't get up. He got me up this morning. Somebody said, and started me on my way. How would I not trust him? How would I not trust him? Helped me guide that vehicle along the highway. Didn't pass out. Didn't lose my mind. Oh, glory to God. And I have enough sense to claim victory. I got enough sense to claim the victory. I speak this to everyone under the sound of my voice. Claim your victory. Claim it. Don't even wonder what, 
just know this. Don't worry about how it's coming. Just know it's coming. How in the world is this coming? It's coming. How oh, glory to God. Train, boat, plane, carrier, pigeon, whatever is coming. He is working all things together for my good. He's working it out for my good. He who has begun a good work in me will perform it. He's faithful to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And for this, God, I give you the praise. I claim the glory in Jesus' name. Amen.